I am pretty close to zero here um, before I put it back up on the table. So you always want to put it back up on the table before you titrate because you would not be able to titrate over here. That would not work. That's going to end up in a spilled solution, broken glass, um, something like that. So before I put this back up on my tabletop, I'm going to use a piece of paper behind it. So I'm going to go ahead and measure my initial volume. Um, this is going to be the initial volume for trial one of part B. 0 0.68, 0 0.68 milliliters is our initial volume for trial one um, of part B. Um, so now this burette is ready to titrate. Okay, so while I titrate, I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of white paper underneath it um, just so I can see when the color change happens. Okay, so um, this is similar to titrations that you've done in CHEM 151 where you titrated to a pink endpoint. Uh, we're using the same uh, indicator this time, so we're looking for the same pink color, that very light shade of pink that persists in our solution. So I'm just going to put that piece of paper there. Again, we're using the phenolphthalein indicator, so uh, we're going to see that endpoint when our solution turns pink. Um, okay, so I have all of my samples ready to titrate. Uh, I have um, dis I have dissolved that KHP in water and then I added two drops of our phenolphthalein indicator. So now they're all ready to titrate. So again, we already took the initial volume of sodium hydroxide that's in our burette. That volume was 0 0.68. So what you wanna do now is you want to release your sodium hydroxide into your flask that's ready to titrate. So I have a piece of paper, uh, a piece of white paper underneath it so I can see that color when it does change. Remember, with that phenolphthalein indicator, you are looking for a light pink color change. So I'm going to swirl my beaker as I add it, and I should start seeing that pink color appear, and then it's going to go away. When it stops going away so fast, that's when you want to start adding your sodium hydroxide slower. So I'm starting to see that pink color. Then as I keep swirling it, it does go away. Okay, so I think that we've reached our end point. That pink does not appear to be going away. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and record my final volume for trial one. Um, so I'm going to, again, put that piece of paper behind my burette and so I can see it better. So the final volume here is going to be 21.60. 21.60. That's in milliliters. Remember that when you use a burette, you should be recording to the hundredths place. So I still have about hmm, at least 25 milliliters left in my burette. I'm gonna go ahead and titrate trial two without refilling my burette. Um, but trial one is finished. I'm gonna put this in the waste container um, later on. Okay, so I have my next flask. I'm gonna go ahead and titrate it. Again, I dissolve that KHP sample with water and then I put in the phenolphthalein indicator, about two drops. Um, so our initial volume for trial two is going to be <clears throat> 21.60. So that's where we ended on the last trial. So I'm gonna do it the exact same way. Uh, I got a pretty good light pink color, so um, that's what I'm shooting for again. This time I do wanna be aware that uh, my sodium hydroxide might get kinda low. So if I think that it's going to run out before my titration is finished, before I see that pink color, I'm going to stop, take a volume, then refill it. So then there might ha you might have to have two uh, volumes that you add together. But we'll see if that happens. I don't know if it's going to or not. There, I added a few more drops than I intended to. That's why it's so bright pink. Uh, but we have reached the end point for trial two. So we're gonna take the final volume here. So the final volume for trial two is 
milliliters, 38.61 milliliters. And at this point, I am going to refill my burette. I still have trial three to do, and then I also still have part C to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that back up on close to the zero mark, on the same way that I did before. So remember I lowered it off the edge of the table so that I don't do anything above my head. I used a funnel and I poured from a small beaker so that I could have the most control possible. Okay, so now I can take my initial volume for trial three. Filled it up pretty close to the zero mark, not quite there. Um, so that initial volume for trial three will be 1.71, 1 1.71 milliliters. And now I'm ready to titrate my trial three. You're right back up to the tabletop. Okay, again, I prepared uh, sample three just like all of the other samples I did. I dissolved the KHP in water, and then I added the phenolphthalein indicator. Okay, so I've reached my end point on trial three. Uh, I'm going to take my, initial, uh, my final volume for this trial uh, with my piece of paper behind it. Okay, so the final volume for trial three is going to be 18.99, 18.99 milliliters. So that finishes up the procedure part for trial, uh, for part B, where you're titrating to calculate the concentration of our sodium hydroxide. So you do have all of that data now.